Yeah, I love that you used the word culture. It's something I'm giving a lot of thought to, and and the book that I'm writing, um, you know, we're we're looking at that. What is a secure culture? You know, what what? How do we get it into the mindset of of everyone? A new base level. You know, here today, it's it's unfortunately very very low. There's a fair amount of aware knowledge of some of these things, but as I talk to more and more and more people and people, sophisticated people, I realize how low. The, 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 the setting is. And so if we can get the security culture just every year, if we can start making progress on this, I believe second generation users, my children, I'm hoping they actually will, will, the big change will be, they will not trust all these implicit connections and attachments and everything. They'll, they'll distrust those and they'll make exceptions. What we do today is we accept everything and occasionally we distrust something if it flags enough of us, enough of our attention that something's off in this. But, you know, a lot of times those go right past. We, we don't have enough of that radar going. So I think we got to move from a, a trusting, you know, c culture to distrusting in the, in the connectivity, you know, accepting things, accepting connections and, and, uh, and attachments from other people. So we work, we have to work on that um, and, and reinforce it. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Here's a big question for you. Are you with absolute certainty that all of your employees are handling the emails and all of the other functions in the business to the highest level of security for the safety of your company? Well, if you're not 100% sure, then you want to make sure you tune in today because we're talking about safety, specifically creating a culture of safety. And we're looking at it through IT security. We have an expert with us today. He is Derek Harp with Cambios. He's done a lot of presentations and work with companies with technology, but also the human factors of security. So we talk about a culture of safety. One of the things I like about this, he gives very specific mistakes that are being made that you can stop right away, but also what you should be doing. What are the next steps to create that culture of safety? Here's the interview with Derek. Before we dive into the interview, I wanted to remind you that you can actually get a tool that I've been working with clients with for the last couple of years. I've refined this tool that's gone through a, several iterations. Now we have it completely automated. You can actually go online and fill out the leadership quiz. To get the leadership quiz, just go to theleadershipquiz.com. That's pretty easy, right? Theleadershipquiz.com. What you will get when you do that is you will answer a few questions you will see where you rate based on the core principles of fast growth companies. If you're ready to grow your company or you want to see where you are, then make sure you go to theleadershipquiz.com. Inside it, you will get insight to where you are, understand where you want to improve, and you will get them mapped into the 10 areas that are most specific to fast growth companies. Again, go to theleadershipquiz.com and you can get that right now. Hi, Derek. How are you? Hey, I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm excited to have you on the show here. It's not a topic we've talked about much, and I know that you're an expert in the world of, of all things security uh, online and, and really protecting networks and protecting companies and protecting individuals. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Cambios. That's your, your company that you go by, right? Yeah, that's that's a new one um, and, and not even a trade name that's that's in, uh, in wide use yet, but um, we... I've, been in the industry for a long time. I was a Navy officer in the mid nineties and that kind of introduced me to security. Started my first company in 1997 and have been going towards that. So this new one is really an offspring of public speaking that I do. And people, I, my own realization after years of building technology solutions to cybersecurity, which are clearly still important, I realized that the human problem is, you know, potentially our biggest problem. And so I'm focusing a lot of my efforts with Cambios, with the technology we're building there, and with my speaking and with a book I'm writing all around the human behavior problem, things that we've got to stop doing. So that's the reason I wanted to have you on the show, Derek. Can you give us like the top two or three mistakes that you see companies making maybe on the human side of security? It's easy, unfortunately. Um, it's easy and it's ubiquitous. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I now, my exposure to case studies and experiences, direct experiences, and uh, on a global basis leads me to believe that this, uh, what I call the problem of first generation connected humans, uh, we trust everything. E even if we've had exposure to some training or read an article, we, you know, most of us uh, in business know that there are potential risks, 
you know, stemming from cybersecurity, but nonetheless, we turn right around and we click on links we shouldn't. We open attachments that we shouldn't from people we don't even know, let alone maybe suspicious ones from people we do know, either being a sub actor. We still open things from people we've never even met before just because they sent it to us. Like, hey, we got mail. Um, and we jump on wireless networks wherever we go, thinking that's perfectly safe. And we even pick up USB thumb drives in the parking lot or at a bar because it has an interesting logo or label on it to see what's on it. We can't do any of these things. These are first generation technology users' habits. Like, oh yeah, this technology, this inner thing, the interweb, inter whatever, what's it called? You know, we've been doing this now for a couple of decades and we just still trust all this stuff and hard habits to break. Well, I know you went through a few of those. One of the things you do before a speech is you do a little bit of a test. Tell, tell us a little bit about that and, and the results behind it. Yeah, it's uh, commonly when people engage me to talk, and I've even now done this at some conferences, I run a phishing simulation um, and, uh, against, you know, basically the participants in, in however large the venue, they're getting larger. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of the same. I'm, uh, you know, when I, I, my, my, my group that I like to speak to the most, although I speak to other groups, but I like business owners, um, and I'm getting 40 to 60 percent uh, in any in any scenario so far over years of doing it. Um, and these are not clever phishing. These are not you know really trying to trick people with uh, doing intelligent work ahead of you know forensics and figuring out um, who they are and when they went to college and tailoring the message. Which of course there are bad actors do that. Uh, mine are in the middle. There are plenty of tells in them, and I'm still getting 40 to 60 percent uh, of business leaders to you know take take the wrong step. I know this is not part of security, but I've, I've noticed an uptick from people sending me messages from things like Clarity around me being an expert, me being an influencer or something, and they want me to, to uh, help them get rescue their money in some way. Have you seen that uptick come? Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, I've been in this a long time, and when I started, it was uh, really, I think, the people spending money and even working on this and anything we read in the newspaper, all the same thing, big banks, you know, big government institutions. Uh, but now this problem has filtered down to, uh, to, to everyone. And there's no, you know, I hate to say it. I'm not a fear monger and there are people in my industry that are, I think we have to take appropriate, you know, cautionary steps, but the truth is there's no safety anymore in being small or security through obscurity as we used to call it. You know, I'm, I'm so little or unknown, nobody will come after me or my company. Uh, that's not true anymore. They'll find you via automated ways. They don't have to be looking for you specifically, find you, and then, uh, you know, a, a design an appropriate uh, extraction of value from you. Derek, let's take a turn in the direction of this. As leaders of companies, that, you know, those guys and girls listening in uh, to the podcast, what should we be looking at or thinking about to increase the level of security in our own companies? Yeah. So um, if, you saw, if you put aside technological solutions that you may need to consider, and of course there's, 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 a, there's due process or kind of due diligence you have to do there. There are things that people need to be using. I've started to focus solely on human behavior. And so that's gonna be you know, some sort of, of training. We're, we're taking Cambios, a very different approach um, than what's on the market today, but there are um, cybersecurity awareness training solutions um, and so doing, doing one of those, you know, leading offerings, if not uh, pursuing something like what we're developing is, is really critical. And that's just from CEOs to interns, getting everybody on board, you know, this is how this stuff works. These are the behaviors that we, we take for granted. And maybe even if you kind of know you shouldn't do it, you do it anyway. Here's why we should not be doing those. Here's the effect. Um, um, I, you know, I, we sometimes run phishing simulations for companies as well, not just for, you know, for my public talks, but for sometimes for end users and for all their employees. And it's, it's revealing. It's my, it's eye opening. And I think companies should have a regimen of that. There are quality providers, uh, you know, around the globe that do those things and, and people need to be embracing, uh, awareness training, you know, growing the awareness of every single person in the organization. And, and it's not like, Owners should be thinking, yeah, I got to get this for Sally or Joe at the low end of my company. Biggest, some of the biggest, you know, offenders are owners, CEOs, um, senior managers. They have more access, so compromising one of those targets is far more valuable at times than, um, you know, than than an intern. So uh, I think nobody's immune to getting 
you know, tuning up and getting better practices going. Hold on for a second. Derek just talked about training. Now, training is important for your employees to train them on the computer systems they use, to train them on the processes, to train them on how to serve customers, how to sell. But you also want training in security, but you also don't forget training them how to be leaders how they can really evolve to be the leaders that will allow the company to grow more leaders. Leaders develop leaders. If you really want to create a powerful company, then make sure you know that you're investing in your employees the right way. Back to Derek. You're the expert here, Derek. I, I am kind of curious, what are the steps we should be taking to uh, give an, an internal audit or how do we actually you know, pr start to protect ourselves? Yeah, well, you, you know, you use the word audit, and and I would say, um, you know, putting technical nuances aside, an assessment uh, of where you are, uh, where your uh, enterprise stands, is is generally a good a good step, and that's something I refer other people to. I've chosen not to to do that uh, with my new company, uh, but I have a number of uh, relationships, and there are many quality providers in the market. You just do your homework and make sure they they are uh, credentialed and and have good, uh, you know, good. Um, backgrounds and, and reference accounts and things like that, um, and that they can come in and do that. And um, so when I connect somebody with, you know, somebody's going to come and do an assessment, that's where they come and look at the entire situation, and they're able to generate uh, a report with, you know, usually with green, yellow, and red things. And you can imagine everybody's got lots of low-level risks, and most people have some moderate risks. And what you find from company to company, depending on what they have historically been doing around cybersecurity, there may be a lot of none or a lot or a few of the high level risks. And it's occasionally it's alarming where it's like, oh my gosh, the keys to the kingdom are laying all over the place. Um, but hopefully, you know, hopefully there'll be less of that over time and people just start moving down the prioritization stack and hardening their environment, so to speak. So an assessment's the first first step. Find where where do we stand? Well, what what's that next step? Uh, obviously, once you get one of those uh, reports, is and a good a good company that's doing the assessing will not say you should do all this and here's the price tag. They'll say here's prioritization. Here's a path to choosing which ones you can do first for the biggest return on your investment, the biggest risk mitigation in your enterprise. That is the only methodology out there. And if you're interviewing anybody for uh, for any kind of work in the cybersecurity realm, if they don't talk that way you know, run for the hills. They're, they're going to try to get you for as much money as they can get out of you. But if they're a uh, integrity based, high quality provider, they'll be saying, we know you can't do everything. So we're going to help you through a process of figuring out which ones you should do first, whether you do them with us or with somebody else, they should, they should talk like that. And if they gained your trust, you, maybe you'll have them mitigate some of those high level risks first. And you kind of work yourself down the stack. Separate from that, always, it's just an annual commitment to keeping everybody's knowledge, awareness, whatever term you want to use of your, your whole user base moving forward. Um, another quick walk away that I give people in, you know, in, in, in meetings before they've ever, whether they hire me or not, is I say, so you know, just make it very clear to everyone in your organization and everyone you work with that you are never going to email them a financial transaction instruction. You're never going to say, please wire this money today. It's just never going to happen coming from us. There's never going to be any email. So you don't have to wonder this is really clever. Maybe it is the CEO. Maybe I should wire the money. No, we're never going to do that. We're going to communicate you, with you through another communication channel if it's an official financial transaction related communication. Just nip that in the bud so no one's ever tricked or confused into moving money around on the say-so of an email. Well, I appreciate that. When you run, you run to a lot of companies that are probably doing some things okay, um, what are the things that, that are so you know, non-obvious that we're missing as you know, leaders of companies to create that culture of safety? Yeah, I love that you use the word culture. It's something I'm giving a lot of thought to. And, and the book that I'm writing, um, you know, we're, we're looking at that. What is a secure culture? You know, what, what, how do we get it into the mindset of, of everyone, a new base level? You know, here today, it's, it's unfortunately very, very low. There's a fair amount of aware knowledge of some of these things. But as I talk to more and more and more people and people, sophisticated people, I realize how low the, 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 the setting is. And so if we can get the security culture just every year, if we can start making progress on this, I believe second generation users, my children, I'm hoping they actually will, will 
the big change will be they will not trust all these implicit connections and attachments and everything. They'll, they'll distrust those and they'll make exceptions. What we do today is we accept everything and occasionally we distrust something if it flags enough of us, enough of our attention that something's off in this. But, you know, a lot of times those go right past. We, we don't have enough of that radar going. So I think we got to move from a, a trusting, you know, c culture to distrusting in the, in the connectivity, you know, accepting things, c accepting connections and, and, uh, and attachments from other people. So we work, we have to work on that um, and, and reinforce it. You know, and, and that I think is the biggest bang for the buck. You, you may be considering technologies and doing things like segmenting your network, all things you should consider doing, um, especially depending on what your business is, your vulnerability might be very high depending on your, your type of business. You gotta do those things. But I suspect that the biggest return on investment is working on, working on the human problem. Now I would say ideally you're gonna do both. When you think about the leader's mindset around this, um, what blind spots come to mind that, that really need to be questioned in their own, you know, setting up this, this culture of safety? You know, that, that's interesting. It's going to vary from company to company. A thing flashes to mind immediately. Um, very, very expensive wire, wire transfer fraud. You know, it's being perpetrated now. Uh, billions of dollars are being wired out and not recovered. It's a scheme and, it, you know, it may go to a reputable bank. It's very shortly that after it goes to some non-reputable bank. It, it's gone um, if you don't catch it, you know, immediately. Um, there are some cultures and, you know, and I think owners and, and senior managers have to look at this. There's some cultures where if the perpetrator is able to re reconstruct a communication that appears to be coming from you and you've built a culture of, I told you to do this and I'm in a board meeting, you cannot reach me or I'm in, I'm in Europe and you cannot reach me, uh, but I need this money to be wired today. If you've built a culture of that no one can stand up to that, if no one can be like, you know what, I don't, that doesn't make sense. I think I'm going to ask about, about that. And you're asking to be, to be bitten. Uh, you're going to want to have people to be able to be skeptical in your organization, even if it looks like an order from the boss. That is a very popular technique. You do not want to have a culture of like, well, I can't say anything. It looks like the boss wants me to do it, even though I don't think the smell of this thing. I'd like to raise a red flag, but I better not. That's something to fix right away if you've got that sort of poisonous culture. I, I share in my own speeches sometimes, Derek, about uh, what happened on that United Airlines flight. It's not necessarily safety, but when the guy was dragged off the plane in, in Chicago, um, it was a, a, you know, they were following the rules. They were following the guidelines of what would set forth and no one stopped it. No one felt safe enough to go, you know what, maybe we shouldn't do that now that we have these cell phones and, and, and whatever it else, maybe we should find another way for this to, to work out. It would have yeah. saved that company, you know, millions upon millions. If someone yeah. would have said, you know what, I just, I need, we need to question this. And yeah. I, I finished this with, you know, fast growth leaders, typically have a culture where people have ownership of it and they think like owners in that they should be questioning these things. It's okay to question and, and, and really because you're trying to look out for the whole safety of the organization. And that's what you're talking about. We should have a culture of safety like that. Yeah. If we can, if we can bring a culture of, uh, of, of security to our, um, to our, you know, to our businesses. And, and by the way, these things transcend business. These same practices apply to your family. And we're going to see more and more families and individuals being targeted. So, the, you know, you can get a ransom that's appropriate for you. $2,000 to get all your photos, your whole lifetime of digital photos back. So these are not things that are just business. These are practices that we all just need to say, this is what it is to live in a connected, a hyper-connected now community and society. These are the new standards. Don't, we can't do things we've done forever and we just got to start being suspicious. And that's weird for me to say. I'm an optimist and I'm generally open and I like meeting new people. So it seems almost counter uh, against the grain for me, but it's what we have to be is just say, you know what, this seems weird or there's something doesn't smell right to this. I'm going to ask, I'm going to stop interacting with what just got sent to me and maybe I'll send a text message or a phone call. I'll try to verify the validity of this, the safety of this some other way besides replying to the email, which of course could be a self-fulfilling prophecy of negative, <laughs> negative response. You know, try, test, be wary, be cautious. It's time for it. Well, wrapping this up, Derek, I appreciate you sharing your insight on creating a culture of safety. And uh, you guys can find him at Cambios, uh, is it cambios.com? 
Uh, it's Kimbio's, uh, techno te Kimbio's Tech. Um, and right now the company's name is thecyberlist.com, but it will be shortly becoming Cambios Tech. Uh, well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Great interview. Love having people on the show to give you some insight, give you some steps that you can take away, actionable content for your business. Creating that culture of safety is something I believe is important. It gives you a chance to really connect with the employees, give them the training they deserve so that they can grow as individuals. My name is Gene Hammett. I love working with leaders, founders, and their teams on the defining moments of their growth. If you are looking and thinking about how you could grow faster, you're wondering why it's not happening, or you're running into specific challenges, I'd love to connect with you. Make sure you reach out to me, gene at genehammett.com. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.